What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining. I have no idea if this is going to work. In fact, I think it might not work, but we will see. So if everything goes correctly today, you will be learning about basketball, how to talk about basketball in English. But we have had some technical difficulties before we started. So the microphone is new that I am uh, using right now. Not new, different. I've had it for a while, but it's not my normal microphone. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully somebody in the chat can say, hey, it's working. I can hear you or no, it's not working. Try again. Well, there are a few people joining. So Facebook was giving me some trouble, but it looks like Etienne Beaumont, how are you? Please tell me, Etienne, can you hear me? Please. <laughs> I hope you can. Hopefully it is Omron. How are you? Okay, Mahmoud's here. All right. Very nice to see. I just hope you can hear me. So if you can, we will have a nice lesson today about basketball. Etienne, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I've been live. I've been kind of busy. All right, Omron says it's clear. Perfect. So let's talk about some basketball. I'm not going to go over the rules. Those are a little too difficult for one lesson. But what I want to do is talk to you about how you can call certain things on the basketball court, in the basketball arena. We'll talk about the ways Americans talk about basketball. And the reason I'm doing this lesson in March is because in the United States, we have something called March Madness. It happens during the month of March, and it surrounds college basketball. So there are men's leagues for college basketball, and there are women's leagues. And right now, both men's and women's leagues, they are trying to crown their champion. And that is going to happen next week. But during the month of March, there are some very big basketball games. There are also some upsets. Upsets is when a team that is not supposed to win beats the better team. And there are a lot of upsets during March Madness. All right, Olivia, good to see you here. Hope you're doing well. Let's see, there we go. We'll change that, make it a little bigger so you can read it. All right, I think that's good. Dennis. Hope you're doing well. Welcome. Yeah, let's shoot some hoops. It's another way to say basketball. Going to shoot some hoops. That means you're going to play some basketball. Omron, Mahmoud, great to see you here. Afghanistan is in the house. If you are watching on Facebook, you should come over to YouTube. I don't dare put any Facebook comments up on YouTube, YouTube doesn't like it. So come to American English with Brent on YouTube. Hey, it is Easter, by the way. So for anyone who celebrates Easter, happy Easter. Before we get into the lesson, I should say a couple thank yous. Let me bring this up here. So we had a new channel member. His name is Ick. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Welcome. I have a little something for you for becoming a channel member. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. And if you would like to become a channel member, 
you do get bonus English lessons every week. This week, I think there were three or maybe four bonus lessons. Yesterday, there was a 20-minute lesson on advanced body parts. So yeah, I've been talking about my upcoming trip to Brazil, giving updates. So if you want more English from me, become a member. Also, Tanya, she said earlier, I cannot join you here, but she did leave a super chat. Thank you so much. I do have a little something for you if you watch on replay. Here you go. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much, Tanya. I do have a new camera coming for my trip to Brazil, and all of this helps me pay for it. Also, Eric left a few super thanks on videos this week. I think he left three, but Eric, thank you so much. Every little bit helps. So I have a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Okay. And now to the reason you tuned in to this English lesson, that is to improve your English and be able to come become a better speaker when it comes to talking about basketball. So let's get into it. The first term here is arena. Arena. In case you don't know, most basketball games are played in an arena. So take a look right down there. An arena is a large building where basketball games are played. And you can see there is a picture of what looks like an arena. And in the middle, of the arena is something we will talk about shortly, and that is a basketball court. A basketball court. But here's a sentence for you using arena. The basketball game tonight will be played in the big arena downtown. The basketball game tonight will be played in the big arena downtown. The next term. I would like to teach you. Very important. It's hard to have a basketball game without a court. That is the flat surface on which you play basketball. It's usually made of wood. So at the bottom, a court is the playing area for a basketball game. And in that picture, you can see there is a basketball court and it looks like that court is made from wood how about this players must stay within the lines of the basketball court during the game if not they are out of bounds so if you go out of bounds with the ball the other team gets the ball out of bounds it's what we call every other place in the arena besides the court yeah my wife and i jamie we have been watching a lot of basketball through the month of march there have been so many games and our favorite team the university of alabama that is where we both went to college they made the final four. So they are in the final four teams who are playing for the championship. That is the first time ever that has happened. What about this one? The hoop. The hoop. Very important when it comes to basketball because that is how players score points when they're playing basketball. The ball has to go through the hoop right at the bottom the hoop is the ring that players try to throw the ball through to score points now i'm not talking about the rules here they are probably too complicated for one english lesson but most of the time 
when the ball goes through the hoop, you get two points for your team. Sometimes you get one point. Sometimes you get three points. But the most common shot in basketball is a two-point shot. We will talk about three-pointers a little later. How about this sentence to help you practice your English? The sentence has the word hoop in it. He jumped high and put the ball through the hoop. He jumped high and put the ball through the hoop. Probably scoring two points for his team. Now, most basketball hoops have something called a net. A net. So I want to talk about two terms here, net and mesh. And I put mesh in really big letters because I thought that might be kind of hard. The net is the mesh hanging from the hoop, which helps see when a point is scored. So there are some basketball courts, maybe a local park could have a basketball court, and they might not have a net. They might not have that little mesh stuff. And it's hard to see when the ball goes through the hoop. But if it's a big game, the hoops will have a net. And then you will be able to see the ball go through the hoop. All right. I would like to teach another term here. The ball swished through the net without touching the rim. So if a player swishes the ball, they do not touch the hoop. The ball goes right through. It might touch the mesh. It might touch the net, but it doesn't touch that ring that we call the hoop and the ball swished. Yeah, we could say the ball swished in. It hit nothing but net. You might also hear that term, swished. There's another part of the hoop that we call the backboard. Hang on, there's the picture. I want this instead. There. That's the backboard. You can see that red arrow pointing to some something. It's the backboard. The backboard is the flat board behind the hoop that helps players make shots. So sometimes you might hear this verb, bank. So sometimes a player will bank their shot off the backboard, hoping it goes through the net so they can score two points for their team. Here is a sentence using backboard. She bounced the ball off the backboard and it went in. She bounced the ball off the backboard and it went in. You could say banked. She banked the ball off the backboard. It's another way to say like bounced. We're going to talk about dribble in a minute. Very important in the game of basketball. And that is when you bounce the ball on the court. Very important. I would like to take a look at the chat for a second to see if there are any questions in there. All right. Nasteron. Good to see you. If I remember correctly, you are from Iran, right? Welcome. All right. Why are there just 15 spectators? There used to be more. Yeah, Omron, I'm not sure. I think it might be that not as many people like basketball. And also, it is Easter Sunday for a lot of people. So hopefully people will watch on replay. There are 68 people total watching on Facebook and YouTube. All right. Juan, welcome. All right. Um, I just went live on something called Shu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. 
It's Little Red Book in English. So welcome. Hope you are doing well. Michael is here. He is from Germany. Hope you are doing well. All right. Hey, Meg is here. India is in the house. Welcome. Welcome. If you are watching on Facebook and you would like to come over to YouTube, I just can't put on any comments from Facebook. YouTube doesn't like it when I do that. I don't think they like it when I say Facebook either, but all right. I hope you have a nice holiday in Iran. Nastaran, good to see you here. Thanks for stopping in. All right. Somebody is from Brazil as well. Hey, in about two weeks, less than two weeks, about a week and a half, I will be going to Brazil to film some English lessons. I am very happy about that. Abdi, how are you? Welcome. All right, we should get back to the lesson about basketball. We were just talking about backboard a minute ago. I want to talk about something else. What is this? All right, we have a picture of a person shooting the ball. Careful. Shooting can be bad. But when we're talking about basketball, it's actually very good. So it's when a player has the ball, throws it towards the hoop. They hope it goes through the hoop. When a player shoots the ball, they try to score points by throwing the ball into the hoop. Hopefully that will happen. The next term I would like to talk about is dribble. We have a couple dribbles in English, but when it comes to basketball, a player dribbles when they bounce the ball off the court. If a player wants to move with the ball, they have to bounce it. Yeah, so you can start dribbling, you can start moving, but once you stop dribbling, once you stop bouncing the ball on the court, you also must stop. I think you can take two more steps, maybe one step, but if not, you will get called for a travel. I don't want to talk too much about the rules, but if you want to move with the basketball, you have to dribble it. Dribble it. What about this one? Pass. I tried to get AI. Oh, hang on. It looks like uh, there are some birds outside of my window. I think they are going to make a nest. It happens sometimes in the spring where, um, where I can look right now. It's under a deck. Uh, well, they took off. But maybe they're scoping out a place to, uh, to build a nest. Do you know that phrasal verb scope out? It means to look at. It means to investigate. So I think those birds were scoping out a place to build their nest. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. How about this? Pass. This is when one player has the ball and they give it to the other player on their team. Hopefully. If not, we would call it a steal. But a pass is when another player gives the ball to their teammate. I asked AI over there to draw or to create an image of a basketball player passing the ball to their teammate. They never quite got it right. So I'm hoping with my definition and that picture, you understand what a pass is. Very important in the game of basketball. If a player is dribbling the ball down the court and they stop dribbling, they need to either shoot the ball towards the hoop or they need to pass the ball to their teammate. But they cannot continue walking and they can't start dribbling again. If they do, it's called the double dribble. 
A lot of basketball terms here, right? What about this one? Rebound. Rebound. There's just a random picture of a person shooting the ball there. Not sure why. This is rebound. Rebound. Rebound means to catch the ball after a missed shot. So if a player shoots the ball toward the rim and it doesn't go in, it bounces off and goes back down towards the players. When a person catches it, they get a rebound. Rebounds are very important because that means your team now has the ball. They could score again on that hoop if it's an offensive rebound. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if the other team gets the ball under the hoop, it's a defensive rebound. And they will probably go towards the other side of the court where their hoop is and try to score two points, maybe three points. Okay, here we go. Offensive rebound, defensive rebound. There are offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. Offense is when the team is trying to score. Defense is when the team is trying to stop the other team from scoring. So if you are on the offense, your team has the ball, you're trying to score. If you're on defense, your team doesn't have the ball, you are trying to stop the other team from scoring. Confused yet? I hope not. Foul. We have a couple different fouls in English. When it comes to basketball, a foul is when a player breaks the rules, which may give the other team a free throw. We'll talk about free throw in just a minute. But anytime a player breaks the rules, it's a foul. And if you look at this picture right here, I mean, this one player is practically hugging another player. Yeah, you can't do that in basketball. You will get called for a foul. Now, in that sentence, there was something called a free throw. can get a little confusing, but at one point in the game, if a team has enough fouls, the other team will get to shoot what's called a free throw. The game stops. A player will go to the free throw line. I think I might have that later, but they get a free shot. Nobody can stop them. It's just them and the hoop, and they try to score one point for their team. A free throw is worth one point. And sometimes you can get two, point, two, two free throws. Sometimes you can get three. But again, not going over the rules. It would be way too long of a lesson. If this English lesson is popular, maybe I will do one about basketball rules. But this lesson is designed to help you talk about basketball. How about this sentence using foul? Notice the way it's spelled, foul. The player was given a foul for pushing. You can't push in basketball. You're playing football, American football. You can push. It's actually encouraged. They want you to push, but not here, not in basketball. All right. This is going to get a little confusing, I think. We also have another kind of foul in English, and it has something to do with birds. So if you look at that picture, what are those things? Are those, make it a little bigger here. They could be Canadian geese. Those almost look like they are Canadian geese. And anytime I hear Canadian, I need to give a shout out to Bob the Canadian. Good Canadian fellow there. Foul though. Foul, F-O-W-L, is a word used to describe birds. Usually ones that people keep 
for eggs or meat? For example, ducks. Those are called waterfowl. People hunt them. Fowl. What about this? Chickens can also be called fowl. Yeah, very strange when talking about basketball and talking about birds. The farmer has many fowls in his yard, including chickens and ducks. Different kind of fowl. What about this? Coach. Coach. Now back to basketball. A basketball coach is a person who teaches players how to play basketball and helps them improve. So they are like the leader of the team. Maybe they played basketball when they were younger, but they're like a teacher of basketball. They show the players how to play basketball, how to get better. They make all of this, all of the decisions when a team is playing a game. So here is an example of a basketball coach in a sentence. The basketball coach trained her team every afternoon, teaching them new techniques and strategies. So when they are not in a game and the coach is teaching, we call that practice. Technique is a special way to do something. So maybe the coach showed them a technique on how to shoot the ball better. And a strategy is like a plan. It's like how you're going to win the game might be some of the strategy. So strategy is a fancy way to say plan. What about this? Substitute. Sometimes you might just hear sub. A substitute is a player who comes into the game to replace another player. So maybe the player that started the game, call them a starter, maybe they were getting tired, so the coach put in a substitute. They put in a sub. Here's a sentence. The coach made a substitute to bring fresh legs into the game. Fresh legs. That means somebody's legs aren't tired. They might be able to move a little bit more quickly than the starter. So the starter can come back into the game. Maybe the sub came in to give the starter a rest. Hopefully that helps. A couple different kinds of shots here. A layup. A layup might be the easiest shot in basketball. That is when a player is really close to the basket and they just lay the ball in. They just put the ball in. It should be pretty easy. It is embarrassing if a good basketball player misses a layup. Right at the bottom there. A layup is a close range shot made by laying the ball into the hoop. And you can see in the picture, that might help you a little bit. It's like the basketball player is going to be really close to the hoop when shooting. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with the basketball player's other arm. Doesn't look quite right, but at least AI got it pretty right. A layup is when a player is really close to the hoop. How about this? He made an easy layup after dribbling past the defender. Let me read that a little better. He made an easy layup after dribbling past the, de the defender. I'm going to try it one more time. He made an easy layup after dribbling past the defender. That is not easy. Dribbling past the defender. Remember, the person who is on defense is trying to stop the other team from scoring. We might also call them the defender. The defender. This is one of the best shots in basketball, and it is a slam dunk. 
A slam dunk is scoring by jumping and forcefully putting the ball through the hoop. That's a very difficult shot because there are often defenders trying to stop this, but it's when a player can jump really high, as high as the hoop, and put the ball right through the hoop. We would call that a slam dunk. The crowd or the audience, the crowd is what we call the people watching the game. They usually go crazy. And when I say go crazy, that means shouting, yelling, cheering. The crowd cheered loudly after the player's impressive slam dunk. Yeah, it's always fun to see a slam dunk. Well, at least when the team you are going for, at least when the team you want to win does that. Slam dunk. Boom. Okay, let's talk about three-pointer, but I do want to make sure there are no questions in the chat. We do have some comments here. Oh, Omron. Thank you so much. Omron lives in the UAE. I plan on visiting there pretty soon. All right, here we go. Got a little something for you, if I can find it. Here we go. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Very generous of you. Thank you so much, Omron. All right. Hey, Bob the Canadian. Goose. Yeah, it happens. When I went to visit Bob the Canadian last year, one of the first things I saw when I crossed over in the, into the Canadian border were geese. Yeah, lots of geese. Talk to Bob the Canadian last night. We got a little something, a little something planned. Right. Olivia, foul also happens in soccer or football by pushing and tackling. Yeah, soccer or football is another game where you can't have a lot of contact. Contact is when two players touch each other. So we would call basketball a non-contact sport. Soccer is a non-contact sport. Hockey and American football, those are contact sports. Part of the game is to hit other people. All right, Hafez, good to see you in here. Subs can go in and out as many times as they want or just once. Yeah, so... For basketball, there is no limit to the amount of times a coach can sub in a player. It's an English phrasal verb there. You could sub in a player or sub out a player. Yeah, there is no limit. They can't do it any time during the game. You often will hear a horn go off when subs come in to the game. So a lot of times it will happen during foul shots. Coaches will sub in and out players. Heap, good to see you. Heap left a comment uh, before we started. Okay, Abdi, can I say the crowd went wildly, uh, wild loudly mm. after the player's impressive slam dunk? No, I would just say the crowd went wild. The crowd went wild. Yeah, hopefully that helps. Hopefully I didn't miss anything too much. It's good to see Michael and Omron talking. All right. Bangladesh. Good to see Bangladesh in the chat. Okay, Omron is wondering about my trip to Brazil. Will you visit the green Amazon forest? No. We are just staying very close to the beach in Rio. But we do have a lot of trips planned, day trips in Rio. Sita, not sure if she will watch on replay, but Sita, a longtime subscriber, we will be meeting her and she will be taking us on a tour. 
and we will be meeting one of her friends. Um, Dennis, good to see you. Will you tell us about the player positions? No, I don't have any slides for that, but C is center. PG is point guard. Um, SG, probably shooting guard, right? And SF would be, I think, strong forward. And PF would be power forward. So there are three different positions in basketball. There's the center and two forwards. They are mainly there to score points. And then you have two defenders. They are mainly there to stop the other team from scoring. But there are only five players on the team on the court at once. Five? Yeah. So sometimes they do score even when they are trying to defend. It happens. All right, Omron. I think they're talking about the weather in the UAE. So getting to be summer, I think, over there. Could be always summer, right? Always hot in the UAE. All right, we have a few more terms to go over here. I think we ended on a three-pointer. And in the pitcher, I'll make it a little bigger. You can see there's an arrow pointing to a line. That line is the three-point line. So if a player makes a shot from behind that line, they don't score two points for their team. They score three points for their team. So here's a sentence, or here's a definition for three-pointer. A three-pointer is a shot made from outside the three-point line. Scoring a three-pointer adds three points to the team's score. Now, my favorite team, the University of Alabama, they are known for taking a lot of three-pointers. And last night, at the beginning of the game, they were not hitting their three-point shots, so they started losing. Luckily, in the second half, they started making their shots. So those three-pointers started to land, and they eventually won, which was pretty cool to see. What about this sign? You might see this in basketball quite a bit. That person, probably the coach, is making a timeout sign with their hands. It almost looks like a T. So when a coach calls a timeout, that means the clock stops. The play stops, and the coach gets to talk with his or her players. So a timeout is a break in the game when the coach can talk to the players. Mostly coaches call timeouts. Sometimes a player will call a timeout when they're on the court, but most of the time it is the coach who calls the timeout. Here's a sentence using timeout. The team called a timeout to discuss their strategy. Remember earlier we said strategy was a plan. So their strategy would be a plan to win the game. I could have done this at the beginning because this is how every basketball game starts. And that is with a jump ball. And in the picture, you can see there are two players jumping high to try to get the ball. There's a person with a black and white shirt. We will talk about that person a little later. But every basketball game begins with a jump ball. And a jump ball is the way to start the game or restart it after a stop by tossing the ball into the air. So whichever team, whichever player can jump higher might be able to get the ball for their team. Yeah, jump ball. You don't see too many jump balls in basketball. It's usually only at the start of the game. And then I don't have possession arrow, but there is a possession arrow in the game of basketball. 
and usually whichever team wins the jump ball, it's just the other team will get the ball when a jump ball is called. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into the rules. They can get very complicated. Here's a sentence to help you practice your English. The game started with a jump ball at center court. Remember, we talked about where the basketball game is played. It's played on a court right in the middle. It's where the jump ball happens, and it is called center court. All right. There is something called a shot clock in basketball. Each team only has a certain amount of time in which to shoot and score, or at least touch the rim. We talked about rim earlier. So, shot clock. Let's go here. A shot clock is a timer that limits how long a team can try to score. It is usually 24 seconds. So, depending on how old the players are, there might be shorter shot clocks or longer, but the average is 24 seconds. So, when a team gets the ball on offense, they have 24 seconds in order to score, or the other team will get it. If they touch the rim with the ball, they will get another shot clock. And if they don't, it's called a shot clock violation. There will be a horn, play stops, the other team gets the ball. Oh, boy. We're going to talk about something very embarrassing right now, an air ball. An air ball. An air ball is a short. I'll read that again. An air ball is a shot that misses the hoop and the backboard. It doesn't touch anything. And it can be pretty embarrassing. If the crowd wants to make fun of the player, if they want to make the player feel bad, you might hear the crowd say, Air ball, air ball after the player doesn't even touch the backboard or the rim. Very embarrassing. It happens sometimes. The shot was an air ball, not touching anything. The crowd chanted, air ball, air ball, air ball. Yeah, it can make the player feel very embarrassed. We talked about center court, right? Well, in the center of the court, there is a line, and that line is called the half court line. So half court is the middle line in the basketball court, half court. This is crazy. I've seen it happen on TV before. She shot the ball from half court to win a million dollars. So sometimes in the middle of the basketball game, we call that halftime, right in the middle, sometimes during halftime, a team will have a contest. Sometimes it's to win a car. Sometimes it's to win a lot of money. And they might have a half-court shot where they get fans from the crowd to try to shoot the basketball through the hoop, from half court. And if it happens, somebody can win something really nice sometimes. All right, double dribble. We talked about this earlier, but a player, in order to move with the ball, they have to dribble or bounce the ball on the court. If that player stops dribbling, stops walking, stops running, and then starts dribbling again, that is a foul. We call that a double dribble. So a double dribble is when a player is dribbling the ball, they stop, and then start to dribble again, which is not allowed. It is against the rules. We need to talk about referee here in a minute. But this sentence has referee in it. 
the referee called a double dribble on the player. So he or she will blow their whistle. We'll talk about whistle in a minute. Play will stop. Other team will get the ball. That's whistle. We're not quite there yet. Let's talk about referee. There's a referee. You can see that person is wearing a black and white shirt. Sometimes they are called zebras. If you know that animal in English, it looks like a horse, but it has black and white stripes. Sometimes referees are called zebras. A referee is a person who makes sure the rules are followed during the game. We often just say ref. Referee. It has three syllables. Americans are lazy, though we often say ref. The ref blew the whistle. Talk about whistle in a minute. The referee called a foul on the defender. There are a couple words in that sentence we talked about earlier. The referee called a foul on the defender. Hang on, let's check the chat here. 57 people are watching this lesson. Thailand, how are you? What is this? Shaq, very famous basketball player, Shaquille O'Neal. He plays for the Lakers. He is a professional basketball player, which means he gets paid a lot of money. I think Shaq, or he used to, he has retired now. I think Shaq always shot air balls during free throws when he played back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, Hafiez. He was not known for taking great foul shots. And I think Kobe Bryant got mad at him quite a bit. Shaq is a funny, funny man. Uh, who is my favorite basketball player, Brent? Uh, Kobe Bryant, by far. Yeah, I love his attitude. I didn't like when he played because he played for the Lakers. I'm a Boston Celtics fan, but I really like his attitude. Yeah, he played with a lot of heart. Sad to see him uh, pass away. I know he had uh, some legal troubles. Don't want to get into that. But I think overall, he was a pretty good guy. Columbia is in the house. I will be in Columbia for a layover. A layover is when you're flying from one place to another, but you have to stop in the middle, maybe to change planes. I do have a layover in Bogota, Colombia when I'm coming home. So I won't be able to leave the airport or anything, but I will step foot on Colombian soil at an airport. So not sure if that really counts. But. All right. Michael Jordan was a defensive player and he scored a lot. Yeah, he played a lot of defense. He, he was, um, we might say, a two-way player. So he was both an offensive player and a defensive player. Yeah, he probably the best player ever, right? I would think. Michael Jordan? Probably. Probably the best. Some will say Kobe. Some will say LeBron. All right, we got a couple more. We just talked about referee, but what about this? The whistle. There is a picture of a whistle right there. A whistle is the tool referees use to stop the game or call a foul. So when you hear a referee blow their whistle, that means the clock stops and something happens. Maybe they call a foul. Here is a sentence using whistle. The game stopped when the referee blew her whistle. All right, that is it. That is the end of the lesson on basketball. So after watching this, 
I hope your English is better. I hope you are able to talk about the game of basketball a little bit better in English. Let's see, any last... All right, Abdi is wondering, have you ever watched a Boston Celtics game? Yeah, I've watched. I've never been to a live Boston Celtics game, though. No. I've been to a live Boston Bruins game. It's a hockey game. I've been to a live Boston Red Sox game. It's a basketball game. And I've been to a live New England Patriots game. But I've never, which is football, but I've never been to a live professional basketball game, at least an NBA game. We have a team here in Maine where I live called the Maine Red Claws or the Maine Celtics. And I've been to a couple of their games. Very good. Yeah, MJ is the GOAT. All right, Poland is in the house. Guess what? I will be in Poland in June. I will be spending a few days in Warsaw. Can't wait. Dennis, what about Larry Bird? Yeah, Larry Bird might be one of the best basketball players ever. He was a Boston Celtic. So a lot of people where I live would say Larry Bird was the best. All right, Nasteron is wondering, Mr. Brent, I'm a soccer fan. Would you please make a lesson about soccer? I did make one on the channel a few years ago, I think when the World Cup was being played. I don't know as much about soccer as I do about basketball, but I will definitely put it on the list. Yeah. Soccer is a fun game to watch or football wherever you are from. Here in the United States, we do call it soccer. Livia says, when I was in elementary school, some people around my age hung whistles as a necklace for self-protection. All right, that is possible. Some people in the United States do that too. They blow, I'm not going to say what we call that type of whistle, but there is a, a name for it. Yeah, maybe you can look it up in English, but yeah, some people do wear a whistle for protection. Oh, really? I'm, Hafez says, I know Larry Bird from Space Jam. I've never seen Space Jam. I was a little too old when that came out, but I, I do know that Michael Jordan was the star of that. Abdi is wondering, is there an NBA team in Maine? No. Our closest NBA team is in Boston, the Boston Celtics. Astron, of course. Well, it's going to do it for this English lesson on basketball. Thank you so much for joining. I do again want to say thank you, Omron. I appreciate the super chat you left. Going to the, to the beginning here. Let's see. Eck, thank you for becoming a channel member. Again, if anybody would like to become a channel member, you will get bonus English lessons every week. You'll get a little stack of books next to your name during live chats. And once a month, we do a members-only chat. Gold members can come on camera and talk. Tanya, thank you so much. And Eric, thank you so much. Again, we must go. Hafiaz knows what I'm going to say. All right. Adios, amigos.